And when it comes to animating, achieving physically correct motion in most cases are the gold standard. And with tools like Cascada now available as free physically based AI powered animation tool for all, this now offers animators the chance to focus more on getting those amazing key poses as Cascada handles the rest. This easy to use animation tool is definitely going to make your next keyframe animation look stunning. And for those who like to take a look at this, probably you like to download it, play with it. The version 1 has just been announced and you can simply go over to the link in the description and grab it. And with that said, let's get right into it. And once you install Cascadao and open it up, it will require you to sign in. And once you sign in, the first thing which you notice is a team. This would ask you to select one of the color teams that you like to work with. In this case, we're going to select the dark team, but regardless of which of the teams that you get to select, you can always change this within the settings later. And once you're done, once you click on save and proceed, you will be presented with a menu that shows you the tutorials and some sample files that you can work with. And since we're here to explore some of the cool things that Cascadao can do, we're going to simply select the standard model saber character and open Open this up and once you open this up you would notice that it looks pretty simple and right here you get to find your timeline your outliner and several other settings exist right here your tools are existing right here just in case you like to work with any of them and you have your menu very standard stuff from this section is where you get to start doing your animation what we will do is select the entire object and i'm just going to move this all the way to this point and how you navigate within your viewport is pretty simple as you hold down alt and your left mouse button to orbit Alt and your middle mouse button to pan, Alt and your right mouse button to zoom in and out, and that is very standard. If you like to add keyframes, let's say we like this model to move from here over to this point, what we can do is we can push this all the way to let's say 24 frames, then you need to press F on the keyboard. F simply means frames, so once you press F on the keyboard you add a frame, if you want to get rid of a frame, you press F one more time and you get rid of that. You can either do this or you can click on the keyframe button right here. And once we have this, we can now push our model to wherever we want and we have that animated. The next thing which we're going to do is place another keyframe right in the middle and then we're going to move this model all the way up. Now that we're done with this, let's change the interpolation because currently this uses a step interpolation and all we need to do is marquee select the entire keyframe by clicking and dragging from the last keyframe all the way to the first one and then we can select right here and change it from step to Bezier. And once we do that, you notice that we have that sweet, sweet, nice moving animation that we want. Now that we have this, let's add one more keyframe and we're just going to call this the rest keyframe. So we're just going to add the last keyframe and we're going to proceed to select the last keyframe and the second to the last one. And we're going to set this one to linear. Now what we're setting this to linear is so that once our motion starts happening, our character can actually rest before it starts again to, you know, playing back. Now, once we have this going, let's use the time range to actually get this where we want the playback to start and stop. This is where the fun actually starts. Cascadao is definitely going to take over from here. Select the entire keyframe by clicking on the layer, go all the way here and click on the auto physics. And once you do that, you definitely notice that we have something happening. So what we're going to do is just set this all the way back. And if we press the playback button or if you tap X on your keyboard, it starts playing back. You can notice something. Our model now has physics. Originally, if you're working with this, actually let's go over to the physics section. If you're working with this, you now notice that this physics is working on the ghost model. And if you like to merge the ghost model with your original model, how you can do that is simple. So we can go all the way down and we can go to where we have the ghost offset and turn this off. And so once we do that and we bounce it back, you can notice our model is properly aligned. So the beginning is properly aligned. The end is properly aligned. If you do have issues with that, there are parameters that you can play with. And if you're also thinking about how can you merge the results coming from the ghost to your main model, how you can do that is also super easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this offset all the way back just to show you guys that, you know, this actually works. If you go over to this button and you click on the snap to auto physics, automatically our original mesh or our original character now inherits all of the physics thing coming from the ghost model. So if we press the playback now, you'd now see we have that going. If you want to get rid of this ghost, you can simply click on this button and you have that out. And this is exactly how easy. This is like the core of what Cascadao is about. The idea that you can just simply make a couple of keyframes and automatically physics just starts applying to them is just brilliant. And with a brand new scene here, let's talk about how you can bring in your own characters and start animating them. One thing to keep in mind is any character that you're bringing into Cascadao needs to be skinned previously before you bring it in. The idea that you can actually rig inside here is something I wouldn't really stand for. It is more like you're retargeting 
to use the physics tools and also the AI tools that exist in Cascadel. And if you're looking for tools that you can use, we've already covered Accurate, which is a very wonderful tool that you can use. You can actually get that for free. You can rig your models from there and then bring them right into Cascadel. Or you can actually do that in Mixamo, Blender, Maya, any tool of choice, and then exporting them as FBX or Colada.dae files and importing them into Cascadel. And how Cascadel actually works with models are like this. Currently, Cascadel only supports .dae and also .fbx file, which is noted, but then you cannot import fbx animation at once you need to import the character first and then import the animation and that is how you can get an animated character to work in here so just in case you've already made your animation and you're thinking about okay maybe i would like to use some physics features you have to do that else you would not be able to have the animated rig work in the cascado and speaking about physics features how you get to apply the physics rig on your rig or on the model that you want to work with it's pretty simple so in this case we're going to look at how you can get started by default if you take a look at a model that you've just imported all you'll be able to see are the joints if you take a look at all the spots you'll definitely not be able to find anything you can only see the joint the mesh and the joint but if you take a look at the standard one which we were working with which is the demo file you would notice that we have access to a whole lot of modes that you can actually work with so how do we set up ours for us to be able to take advantage of the physics system that exists here? And how to do that is super easy. So we already have a simple rig right here. So what we can do is to click on this button and then click on yes. So once we have that, we can click on the quick rig tool. So the quick rig tool is going to bring up a very tiny mapping tool, which we can use to map several parts of our model. So we can select the given part, click and drag and map that part right here. So we can select another one, click and drag and map that right here. And if you don't want to do this for every single thing, what you can do is this. You can actually go over to the original section and type in the word right, go over to the mirror section and type in the word left. So once you do that, just like you have with human IK when working in Maya, that is exactly the same thing that you have here. So once we have that ready, the next thing which we can do is to click on create mirrored object and automatically you'd notice that mirrors. So what we're going to do is to do for the rest of them, and then we're also going to make sure that we have the heap and every other part fixed. And with this done, you can proceed to rig the hand if this is what you want. But in this case, we're just going to leave this as it is and click on add rig elements. And once we add the rig elements, you can see we have some nice rig elements happening right here. So you can select several parts. So let's say you want to get rid of this part. You can select that and hit the delete button to get rid of that part. If you'd like to add more, you can actually go ahead and even add more. So we can select that and add another rig element if this is what we want. But since we want to just simply keep things the way they are, I'm just gonna back up a bit. And with this here, we can now proceed to click on generate rig. So once we click on the generate rig automatically, this generates a rig, and you now notice that we have all of the necessary things that we wanna work with. Now, one thing to keep in mind whenever you're working with any of these generated rigs is try as much as possible not to delete them because if you choose to delete any of those balls that we actually just played with, and maybe you try to tweak them, one thing I did find out is Cascadel just makes the entire thing not to work exactly as you would probably want them to. So if you're done with the rig, just simply let it be the way it is, then hit the generate rig, and that way you'll be able to have something like this. So from here, we can grab onto any part and we can start animating. So I might want my character to do, you know, some dance, and you can see that that is uh, that's super cool. So you can now start animating various parts of your model if you want. And you can see how interesting this is. There are certain parameters that you might want to explore if you're looking at this. So one of them is, you know, the gravity. So you can turn this gravity down and you notice it changes the behavior. You can actually amplify this to actually get some more stuff and you can get some even nicer looking things from here. If you're thinking about playing with things like spring, they do have secondary spring motions so you can add some secondary spring motions you can add some secondary motions as well and this is going to be very good for characters that have tails and all that it's going to be pretty brilliant to have all of that to work and we can still do the offsetting like we mentioned earlier if you're also looking at exploring the physics corrector this is exceptionally good if your character is rotating and you want to control the global rotation to actually match up with the initial rotation then you can set all of these to 100 Maybe the rotation or the translation, you can set this to 100 
and get a much more better result out of it. In certain instances, if you already have your physics animation baked in like we have here, you can always make changes to that. So I can select this and we can go all the way in, go to the keyframe that we want and I can make a pose. All right. So once I make this pose, you notice it still travels. But what we want to do is make sure that we have this keyframe and then we'll select this, hold down shift, select the other one, make that linear. So once we do that, you notice the keyframe just uh, goes from this point to this point okay so there's a quick snapping going on there i'm also going to go ahead and select all of that and make sure that we have just that linear motion going on here so to get the most out of it as well you can go all the way back and you know the drill get the animation thing happening set this all the way back press the playback button and you see we have a much more nicer looking animation so this is just in case, you know, you would like to modify your animation over time and you probably want to get a much more better result. This is something that you can easily do. And for those who are thinking about the graph editor, you're probably wondering, you know, we don't have a graph editor here. We do. So to get access to the graph editor, you need to go over here, click and then select the graph editor. Now, once you select the graph editor, if you select any of those joints like we have here, because, you know, we're using the auto posing mode, we would not be able to see anything within the graph. You need to switch over to your joint. And because, you know, the animation gets baked into the joint that way, if you select, you'll be able to see the graph and uh, all the associated parameters that exist there. To zoom in, you can select and then tap T on the keyboard to zoom in. So that way, the more you zoom in into this, you would also notice that the keyframe or the timeline is also zooming all the way in. So you can do all of that if you want, and you can also use the timeline to control how far or how close these things are. So this is for the graph editor, just in case you're wondering, you know, if you can or if you cannot access the graph editor, yes, you can do all of that. Something else which is also worth mentioning is this, that at any point that you're creating your animation, you can actually go in and add up tracks. So you can add some tracks depending on what you want to work on. You can add tracks and you can also add some folders to organize these tracks. And if you're thinking about bringing in textures for your model, of course you can. So if we switch over and select the individual object, we can load the associated textures. This button now allows you to select textures. And we can go over to the texture section, find any of the textures that we want that deals with the character, and we can add that. Also, if you're into work cycles, you can now use these buttons to create cycles, or you can actually create cycles with offsets. And how you do this is very easy. So at this point, if I tap X on the keyboard, you notice our animation just plays back. And if we go in here and set this to 150, push this all the way to this point, you would notice that after we get to 40, nothing happens. We can select the entire model and now click on create cycle. Now, once we do that, we can now proceed to extend this all the way to 150. And once we press the playback button, you would notice that our character animation just continues. So in this case, if you're looking at making work cycles, of course you can. Another new feature that is now available with Cascado is the global forward kinematics. So previously what we had was the inverse kinematics and the forward kinematics and you can actually find them easily. So right here you can switch from IK to FK and also to global forward kinematics. The same thing applies here so you can switch and select any of these. And not only is this going to help you pose your character and get the perfect posture that you're looking for, it also makes sense to note that you can use this within your timeline. So you can keyframe a forward kinematics, then an inverse kinematics, then a global forward kinematics in the same strip on your timeline. So this is more like it. Cascado 1.0 is finally available to the public. And for anyone who would like to take a look at this, probably want to try it, you want to start creating some amazing poses for yourself or create that breathtaking animation, then links to this is going to be in the description and do well to check it out. It is also worth mentioning that if you would like to follow up with the Trello so that you can see the updates that are coming, the updates that the folks at Cascado are working on, you can actually come through and check these ones out as well. As I'm also going to go ahead and put a link to this in the description. Furthermore, if you're thinking about owning Cascado right now, the version that we're working on or working with is the free version. So the free version allows you to do a lot of things. So in case you're thinking about getting Cascado, working with it, it is currently free. You have a free version you can work with. As far as your revenue is under 100,000 per year, then of course you can go ahead and do that. But then if you want to go a little bit pro, then you can take a look at the pro version. But if you're just getting into this, I would suggest that you try out the free version, see what and what you can deal with, check out some of the things that can actually match to your workflow before going for the pro version.
And if you're thinking about going for the pro version, right now they're doing a 25% discount, which is running till 31st of December. 2022. The AI assisted keyframe animation software Cascado is now available for everyone to play with and of course I would like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.